Hey, this is Lars Penanger with Inside Triathlon and InsideTri.com, and we're actually in Denver, Colorado at the Retool Fit Systems studio. I'm here with Todd Carver, who's uh, the mastermind behind Retool Fitting Systems. Um, and actually, we've done a, uh, an injury prevention fit video already that, that you can find on, on InsideTri.com. Yes. Um, but today, you're going to be helping me out with, uh, with a new bike that I just got and uh, kind of uh, going over some base measurements and, and fitting me to this new bike. Optimizing your performance like rather that. than fitting around an existing injury, which is what I usually like to do. There's three segments to the Retool Fit process. Starts with a flexibility and overall body structure exam, which I'll do on the exam table. The second segment of the Retool Bike Fit is to record the initial movements of the rider. The third segment of the Retool Bike Fit is to re-record the motion of the rider to ensure that the changes the fitter has made are appropriate. So here what I'm looking for is if one leg is grossly longer or shorter than the other. Um, standard leg length test. He looks pretty even. Okay, bend those knees up one more time. And even the feet. And look at the relationship of his uh, shin bones. Looks even. And then I pull on both legs and look at the relationship of the ankle bones. Looks fairly even. Now I'm going to see how flexible he is. Just relax. I'm going to see how far I can raise this leg. What this test does is measures the how flexible the hamstrings are. Okay. And I do this two ways. Well, not that's not really that tight, really. He looks pretty good. So here what I want to look for is abnormal foot mechanics. So in cycling, the foot is important. So I want to see what type of arch he has what type of rear foot angle he has and what type of forefoot angle uh, he has before I get him up on the bike. The next thing that I look for is internal or external rotation of the, of the lower shank or the uh, tibia. So basically whether he's duck footed or pigeon toed. And Lars looks pretty neutral here. Here I'm going to test for IT band tightness. Okay, let me have your left leg and just let that drop all the way to the table. So with a tight IT band, this leg is going to um, migrate out to the side as it approaches the table. So what happens is as the leg starts to lower, his leg comes all the way down to the table and stays straight. If he had a tight IT band on this side, it would um, move out towards the side. The IT band would pull the leg away from the midline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get behind Lars and I'm going to look at the levelness of his pelvis. So this is as I would expect. On the table when I pulled on his legs they were even length and now when he's standing loaded his pelvis is perfectly um, symmetrical. I also move around to the front and look at the bony landmark on the front of the pelvis to see if that's level. Looks good. This also gives me a chance to look at his arch type and how much pronation he gets on, on his feet. So he does, his ankles do roll in a little bit. Um, so he, to get his foot to neutral, takes a little bit of arch support. Let me move your foot here, Lars. And that would be a neutral foot. He does pronate a little bit when he stands. So if someone's complaining of, of knee pain, and you look at a foot type like this, a lot of times all they need is orthotics in their shoes. Lars doesn't have any pain, but his feet do pronate a little bit. So I just make a note of that before I get him on the bike. Okay, let's get you up on the bike.